In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural aqua marble material. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group. So we have the scale value, so you can change the size of the entire material on your object. And then we have two different colors, so color one and color two. So of course you could have these kind of be the aqua colors, or you could really make it any other color you want. So you could do kind of like a tannish brownish marble, or you could even do like a blue marble. Then we have the roughness value, so you can make the marble more rough or more shiny on the surface. And then we also have the subsurface value, because marble does actually have a little bit of subsurface scattering, so light can go through the marble. So you have that value there. And then we have four distortion values and three detail values. So you can play around with all these values and really get some different variations of the marble. So if you want to look super detailed, you could turn up this distortion. Now you can see there's a lot more noisy detail and it's really small. You can also change this distortion value here and then there's also all these detail values so you could turn them down if you want less detail or keep them up if you want lots of detail and if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material you can get that on my gumroad store and my patreon page the links are in the description and to purchase all of my materials you can check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So before we start, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I added an icosphere and right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to six so it is nice and smooth. And you can use the object context menu and shade that smooth. And then I scaled the object down by 0.2 and I pressed Control A and just applied the scale. So that's better when modeling to the real life scale in Blender because the default objects are quite large. I also thought it would be cool to preview this on a monkey head. So I went to the add menu and I added a monkey head and I pressed Control 3 to add a subdivision surface with three levels. And over here on the modifier panel, I can just apply the subsurf and I can use the object context menu and shade it smooth. And I can scale the object down and I'll type in 0.2, hit enter, and I'll press Control A and apply the scale and I'll just move the monkey head over and maybe rotate it. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. And if you select the camera and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length up to 80 just because it zooms the camera in a bit and I like how that looks better. Now as for the lighting, I added this area light right here. So if I go into the rendered viewport mode, you can see I added this area light and I turned the power up to like an 80 and just left it as a white color. And then also to get some more realistic lighting and reflections, I went here to the world properties and I added in this machine shot. 02 1k hdri this is a free hdri from polyhaven.com and i'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it and i downloaded the 1k version and the hdr version on polyhaven so once you download the hdri you can click on the yellow dot next to color you can choose environment texture and then click on the open button and open up the downloaded hdri and i also turned the strength down to 0.8 just so it's a little bit less bright and then if you want to make the background transparent, you can go up here to the render properties. You can open up the film tab and you can check mark the transparent button. And also here on the color management, I set the view transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the render mood and I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just select the object. I'll click on new to add a new material. I can just rename this material to aqua marble and then I can click and drag and drop the same material onto the other object. And then I'm also gonna be using the node wrangler add-on. So to enable it, you can go to edit, you can go to the preferences and over here on the add-ons tab, if you go to the search and search for the node wrangler, you can enable the node wrangler add-on. So it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's close the user preferences. So to start off, I want to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a wave texture. Let's drop the wave texture down here and I will control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. 
Now the wave texture looks all straight right now, but we're gonna be adding some other nodes to the wave texture to distort it so it looks all random and looks more like marble. Let's select the wave texture and I'm gonna press Control T and that's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I wanna use the object coordinates so we'll plug the object into the vector and that way it'll place the texture on the object more evenly. Now let's change some of the wave texture settings. So on the sign here, I'm gonna change it to saw instead and that'll kind of make it so it starts as black and then gets lighter and then gets black again. And I like that better and it'll work better for the marble material that I'm going for. Let's also turn the scale down. So I'm going to turn the scale to just like a 1.5 and I'll turn the distortion to a high value like 16 and I'll turn the detail to 15 and then the detail scale here I could turn this up to like a 1.3. There's a bit more detail. And then the detail roughness I could turn up to like a 0.7. So now you can see we're getting this cool effect and it looks very noisy and random on the edges. Now I want to distort it more so I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture and we'll put the noise texture between the mapping and the wave. So now the noise texture is going through the vector so it's distorting the placement of the wave texture. And let's change some of the noise settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 2. I also want to turn the detail to the maximum of 15 so it's more detailed. And I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.7. So now you can see that's definitely looking more detailed. Now I want the noise texture to have less of an effect over the wave texture. So we're going to go to the add menu and we're going to search for a mix color and we'll put the mix color between the noise and the wave. Now this mapping vector is going to go up into color A and then the noise texture factor is going to go into color B. So we're using this mix to mix between the original mapping which isn't distorted and the noise texture which is very distorted. Now on the mix type here I'm going to change this to the linear light instead. Let's drag the wave texture up here. So now I can drag this factor around and you can see it's blending between not being distorted and being very distorted. And I'm going to turn the factor up to one so it's very distorted. But this can also be used later in the custom node group to control the distortion. Now I also want to add some more texture details so I'm going to go to the add menu and I'll search for a Voronoi texture and we'll put the Voronoi above the wave texture. And let's control shift and select this Voronoi to preview it and I want to change some of the settings. So on this F1 here I'll change this to distance to edge so we have that cool crack texture and then let's turn the scale to six but then all the other settings I'm going to leave how they are. Now I want to also distort this to make it look more random. So I'm going to select this linear light here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it up here. And I'm going to put the result into the vector so that this will be distorting it. But then I want to mix between the mapping, which is using the object coordinates, and this linear light here. So let's take the mapping vector and I can put that into color A. And then this linear light here, this one is going to go into color B. So now if I drag this factor around, you can see it's distorting it a lot. So let's drag the linear light back here and then this Voronoi can go over the wave. And then this factor, I'm going to turn this to 8.2 so it is distorted but not quite as much. So now I want to mix the Voronoi and the wave together. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select both textures and I'll press control zero. So control zero is going to add this mix color. We can click on the arrow to open it up and drag it here. And on the type here, I just want to add the light values. So we're going to change this to light instead and make sure the wave color is going into B and the Voronoi distance is going into A. So now as I drag the factor, you can see it's just adding the light values on top and I'm going to turn the value to 8.7. So here's the Voronoi, here's the wave, and then here it is mixed together. Now to add even more detail to this, I'm going to be adding a color ramp and making more contrasty colors. So I'll go to the add menu, let's add a color ramp and put it after the lighten, and then I'm going to drag this tab right over here, and then I'll hold down the control key and click here to add another tab, and click here to add another tab. Now what we're going to do is have the tabs get lighter and darker. So this one here, let's make this kind of like a darker color, and then this one here, here, we're going to make a lighter color and then this one here we're also going to make a darker color so you can see it's dark then it gets lighter then it gets darker and then it gets lighter so by changing between lighter and darker you can see it's adding even more detail so there's some darker parts here then there's some lighter parts and then there's some darker parts and you can especially see it happening if I kind of drag these around so you can see if they're just both light and then both dark there isn't quite as much variation but by changing between light and dark you can see it's adding more variation and if you zoom way in here you can see there's so much cool detail there in the marble texture and if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using on this color ramp I will just go through all the hex values so this first one here this color is going to be a hex value of 3e 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 then this lighter one here this one will be a hex value of c6 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 
Then this one here is going to be a hex value of 363636. Three, six, three, six. And then the final one here, this one is just going to be completely white. So it's going to be six Fs. So I now want to actually make the custom colors for the marble. So I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for another mix color and we'll put this after the color ramp. And then let's actually drag the principal shader and drop it right here after the mix. And you can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. Now I want the color ramp colors to control what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So we're going to put the color into the factor. So now for color A and B, we can make the custom colors. So for color A, I'm going to make this kind of a greenish bluish color and it's going to be darker. And then for color B, this is kind of going to be just like a light green. And if you want to use the same exact colors for color A, this is going to be a hex value of 274C46. In color B, this is going to be a hex value of 8FBFAE. And then also let's turn the roughness way down. So I'll turn the roughness to like a 0.1 so it looks more like a shiny marble. And also let's add some subsurface scattering because marble does allow a little bit of light to go through. So we should add some subsurface. So we'll open up the subsurface tab and I'll turn the weight all the way up to one. All right, and that is the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So let's click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And I'll press control G to join them together into a node group. And if you press the tab key, that'll go in and out of the node group. So we'll go out of the node group and I can drag it over here. Let's make it a bit bigger. And then I can copy the material name and I can paste it here in the node group. So let's hit the tab key to go into the node group. I'll press the N key to open the side panel. And if you click on the group tab right here on the interface, I want to double click on this and I'll rename it to shader just because I like that better. And then if I go over here to the side, this group input, we can plug values up to the group input to control those values outside of the node group. So I want to control the overall scale of the entire material. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures. So we can take the scale and I can put that into the group input. But then if I click here on the scale value, this is going to be three values, but I want one value to control the entire scale. So on the type here, let's change this to a float instead, and that way it's going to be one value. But then I need to turn the default value back to one, and I need to go outside of the node group, and I want to turn the scale back to one. So let's go back inside the node group. Then I want to control the custom colors. So we'll drag the group input right up here and we can take color A, put that into the extra socket and color B into the extra socket. And if I double click on them to rename them, I'll rename this one to color one and color two. Then I want to control the roughness of the material. So let's take the roughness value and put that into the extra socket. And I also want to control the subsurface. So we'll put the subsurface weight into the extra socket. And if I double click on this to rename it, I'll just rename it to subsurface or you can call it subsurface scattering or whatever you want to call it. So I now want to control the distortion values. So we'll drag the group input back over here. And the first distortion value is going to be this linear light here. So you can see the factor is going to change the distortion. So we'll put the factor into the extra socket. Let's double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to distortion one. Then for the second distortion value, I want to use this light in here. You can see that's changing the distortion. So let's put the factor into the extra socket and this one I can rename to distortion two. Then for the third distortion value, this noise texture has a roughness value. You can see that's changing the distortion as well. So we'll put the roughness into the extra socket and this one we'll rename to distortion three. And then for the last distortion, I want to take this wave distortion value. You can see this one is making it distorted as well. So we'll put this wave distortion into the extra socket and this one's going to be distortion four. Then I want to have three different detail values. So the first one's going to be this detail here on the noise. So we'll put that into the extra socket. Then the second detail value is going to be the detail on the wave texture. So we'll put this one into the extra socket. And then the last one is going to be the detail scale on the wave texture. So we'll put that into the extra socket. And if I double click on them, to rename them, I'll rename it to detail one, detail two, and then also detail three. All right, let's hit the N key to close the side panel. I can drag the group input down here and I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And we can now review the final material. So we have the overall scale, then we have the different colors. So color one and color two. We also have the surface roughness of the marble. Then we also have the subsurface and then we have distortion one, distortion two, distortion three, and distortion four. And then we have detail one, 
and we have detail two and we have detail three. So this material is quite customizable with all the distortions and the details. So that'll be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and Patreon page with the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, definitely check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase my procedural material packs, which are just packs of 10 procedural materials. And you can get any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist with the link in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.